All right, I want to show you my uh, casting stand I made. This is a basically a 54 millimeter uh, two grain Bates grain in length, plus a little bit of uh, extra room for slop and cut. And here I've made myself a casting stand. So I have uh, two pieces of wood that are uh, basically glued together. The top piece has the uh, the uh, inch and three quarters hole cut out on the t the, uh, the bottom. Same on the top. And dowels holding them together has been glued. And uh, what I do is place a piece of tape over the top. Um, as you can see, and slide it down into the And here's my coring rods. These are 3 8 inch coring rods. So what I figured is uh, this is probably the smallest that I would need. So even with my the 54 millimeter, I go ahead and core them with the uh, with these um, 3 8 and then I just uh, drill out uh, what I what I don't need. And with this here, just find the hole at the bottom and press it through. And show you the next one here. Okay. And basically, there's coring that I have. All right, so I'm going to be mixing up a batch of uh, Double D Black. Uh, this is a formula that I got from uh, the vendor that I'm picking up all of my. Um, materials from. And as you can see I have my casting tubes already set up here. Uh, my large scale, this is uh, really pouring some of my liquids and mixing some of the or measuring some of the uh, uh, larger stuff. And Then I have a small um, tenth gram scale that I use for measuring my uh, my metals because um, that, uh, that that's kind of important to, to get accurate, some accuracy with the scales. Um, KitchenAid mi uh, mixer um, and my chemicals, cleaning towel, um, and an extra tube. I'm going to be mixing up uh, some a single wimpy red grain to uh, to finish off uh, some uh, other grains that I have for motor. All right, so uh, I'll walk you through each step as I go, and uh, I'll talk you through it just so that you can see what I'm doing. So as I said, I'm mixing up uh, the Double D Black. Uh, this is, uh, I guess, something similar to a skid mark or um, something of that nature. The first thing we need is uh, 350 grams of R45. Uh, this is uh, this is our binder. So I'm going to tear out my scale. And this will be uh, a six grain, 54 millimeter. We need 349, 180, okay, 354, and I'll pull some out with a spoon. Alright, so the next compound, tear up my scale, so it's zero. Now I need four grams of tepanol. This stuff is uh, rather thick. And I think that's about a four gram blob right there. Let's see how I did. Perfect, four grams. So I've got my, um, my R45 and my tepanol in, um, in the mixer here. Uh, 
um, and I'm going to mix this for probably about five or ten minutes. Um, but before I do that, one of the things I'm going to do is add um, uh, this is this batch is a 1320 grams. So I'm going to add about two drops of silicone oil. And what this does, this acts as kind of a defoaming agent. There's one, two, um, and kind of stops the uh, the foaming from happen happening and uh, keeps down on the amount of uh, air that gets in the mixture. So I'm going to go ahead and start this mixing for probably about five or ten minutes uh, to get the tepanol in, mixed in there well. And just mix it at a slow speed. And now uh, when this is all nice and mixed, we'll come back and um, I'll add the AP or the uh, the metals, which will be red iron oxide, and then uh, the magnesium. Uh, so I'll be back in a minute. So what I'm doing here is I'm measuring out my magnesium. I need uh, one point. 32 grams, which as you can see, um, it's not very much. So just as a 2.8. One point three. All right. So the next thing we're going to be mixing, and I put my uh, the magnesium here. Um, we're going to be mixing um, or pulling out twenty six and a half grams of uh, red iron oxide Fe two O three. So I'll. Uh, I gotta open my bag a little bit, so I'll just come back when uh, after I've got it measured out. Okay, so I have 26.5 grams of the red iron oxide and my 1.32 grams of magnesium. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop my blender, or the blending, and I'm gonna go ahead and put the metals in now. As you can see, it. Uh, it's almost got the consistency of really, really warm honey, um, which is nice is that it did not uh, not foam up on me. This has been mixing now for probably about five minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it and uh, add my metals. Just to keep the uh, the continuity of this, I've started. Uh, I've went ahead and dumped my metals back in there. I don't know if you can see them. Um, I've dumped my metals in there and I'm going to go ahead and mix these for probably about another five or six minutes. Okay, so I've been mixing for a while. I scrape, just scrape down the sides and uh, I'm going to put this back in and allow it to continue mixing. Okay. So while that's mixing, the next thing I'm going to do is I've got my bucket of uh, AP, and I need uh, 887 grams. Um, I've got my nice handy dandy little holder here, and uh, my scale is zeroed out. So the way that I do my AP is I went down to Walmart and got a little uh, sifter for flour. Nice kind of handy little thing. What this does for me, this pulls out all of the, uh, the clumps. Three. If you see, you now we have these big grains left in here. Um, and nothing but the fine salts left in the bottom. So it's 700. It's 
or eight. Eight eighty seven.